Tom and what I'm going to share with you today is I'm going to build a methane generator out of a IBC tote 335 gallons one of the bigger ones and what I've done is I've modified it a little bit I've used um, uniseals which are our little rubber gasket you buy from the Uniseal warehouse online you can't get them at Lowe's or Home Depot so you're gonna have to order them online they're about three bucks a piece and also when you get one of these IBC totes there's a few things you gotta look for on them like the lids some of them you can see that it actually has a hole in it so that's not gonna help and this one's solid but it's cracked so that's not going to work. So I bought a, a PVC plug to plug the hole. And then that'll seal the center. And you cut a three inch hole, which the Uniseal will fit in. And then you can put a two inch pipe. Or if you're ambitious, you can actually get the four inch sewer pipe but it's a little harder to work with. I would stick with this smaller stuff on at least the side the methane comes out and the side you feed it, you could probably go bigger, but I would do the two inch to go into the tote and then put a thing looks like a funnel at the top to make it bigger. And this side is where your um, the byproduct of the process of all the solids and stuff as they as the process works it breaks down the solids and it turns it into a liquid that you can use for fertilizer and when you feed it the liquid level actually goes up so it's going to push some of the liquid out here and you can dump it into a bucket and put it right in your garden and the valve you want to make sure your valve doesn't leak <clears throat> now to the pipes uh, the one where you feed it, I've actually cut a, a 45 degree cut down at the bottom, if you can see down there at the bottom, all the way at the bottom. So when you push the food and poops and stuff in there, it's going to go all the way down the bottom and come out at the bottom of the tote. And then this one, where your fertilizer comes out, you want to cut a hole about halfway up. So what I did is I put it about right here. So that's about the center, because in the bottom you're going to have a slurry of all the poops and stuff, which is a liquid semi-solid. And then at the top, you're going to have oils and sludge and grease and stuff. Well, the process eats the slurry in the bottom, and it also eats the, the grease and the oils on the top. So you don't want to pull that out of the tank. You want to keep it in the tank, because that is your fuel. That's why you want to put this hole in the absolute center. So... That's when the liquid comes up. Now on the side where your methane's gonna come out, you wanna measure this so the hole is just barely below the uniseal. I'd go maybe a quarter inch below the uniseal. And then the methane's gonna actually build up up in the top of this tank. And it's gonna come out here and come down. And then you'll have a valve here. You'll wanna glue at this, these pipes, unless they fit so you can test them for leaks, but the other ones you don't want to glue because if you get a blockage, you want to be able to take them apart and unseal them or unblock them and then put it back together. But this side, um, you don't want the methane to leak. And what I would do is go to like Napa or AutoZone <clears throat> once you get this all cut out. And there's this stuff called weather strip adhesive. They make it. Uh, for cars, it's actually to glue the emblems on the side of your cars. And what I would do, since it's going to seal really good on the pipe, but like this one, see the, the seal's not that great around because I used a kitchen implement. I couldn't find anything that was exactly three inches. And the other two are in pretty good shape. They're pretty sealed. They're going to seal all right, but I'd, I'd get some of that. It's either yellow or black. The black is the best. And put that around the bottom and glue the uniseals in first. And then once the uniseals are glued in, you can spray it down with some um, like dishwashing liquid and water 
and slide your pipes and make sure the burrs are off the ends where you cut it because they'll cut the uniseal and make them leak. So once that's done and you got your tote all together, the next step from here would be to get a, a like a 55 gallon drum, plastic, and break this down into a smaller pipe. You could even use that plastic pipe you use for your air conditioner, your swamp cooler, that little brown stuff. Run that over and down and get a couple more pallets and put four of those 55 gallon plastic drums on it. Cut the top out and get four 30 gallon drums. Cut the top out of them and I'll have to go into that further later but once you get this going it's going to take about two weeks to get it going want to fill the bottom get you five five gallon buckets put pig poop horse poop cow poop whatever you can in it ground up food pretty much anything so get that five gallons five five gallon buckets dump them in here get it down in the bottom and then once you get that in the bottom fill it up with water the rest of the way about right there and then let it sit or if you want to get it going faster you can actually put the poops in the bottom I was telling you and then once the poops are in the bottom they're probably going to be close to about here maybe a little higher and then fill it halfway with water and let it sit for about three days and then test the methane see if the methane is started by opening the valve seeing what comes out put a small tube on it and with a small orifice and light it and see if it burns if it burns you got methane going on so then i would fill the tank the rest of the way up to about right here once you got it filled up to there get it all sealed off and then let it go for about two weeks the problem with the methane generator is you don't want to let it just sit and build up pressure the methane is going to have to be used at all times so what i was going to do since we live in north idaho and there's going to be a whole bunch of cold weather snow and this is just going to turn into a big black block of ice so it's going to do me no good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tee off the methane pipe i'm going to go underneath and i'm going to build a small little box underneath and put a plate of steel in between the tank and the the pallet and the plate's going to fit underneath the actual plastic part of it and it's only going to be between that and the pallet and then i'm going to build a small box with a little burner out of like a stove for a pilot light and then you just let the pilot light burn and set it up so it doesn't get blown out and just let the pilot light burn and that small amount of flame what it's going to do is going to heat that big metal plate underneath and it's going to keep that bottom section of the tote warm so your process won't be interrupted and then once we get that all built then i'm going to get that foam i'm either going to spray foam the whole thing or else i'm going to get that those foam you put in your your walls and stuff that foam you'd have to cut it up it comes in four by eight. okay my other video shut off for some reason but uh, what i was talking about is buying that blue foam stuff that comes in the panels so you can frame a box around this and put that foam in it and insulate it really nice so it stays nice and warm and if it's warm where you're at you shouldn't have any problem doing the just painting it black what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick this inside the tote so you can see what i did hopefully it works you can see the the hole that i cut up in the top and then you can see the hole down on the bottom you can see this this one's hole So now you can see how everything was done. I think it's going to work pretty good. You can see it's a 325 gallon or a 
I guess it's about a 1300 liter tote. Yeah. Doesn't really matter if it's food grade or not. Um, a lot of them come with vegetable oil and um, even the car and motor oil and stuff. The bacteria that's in this is going to eat it. So we'll go from there. Uh, we're going to paint it now. Got the kids some paint brushes and put the kids all to work and then it'll be all ready to go. We'll have some pictures and some more video. It's Tom at Simply Gridless. All right, we got the boys painting our IBC tote. It's starting to look pretty good. It's going to be all dark color. It's going to be nice. It's going to make us some methane to cut down our propane use. You'll probably read on the internet a lot of these people out there don't think this works, but you wait and see. We'll show you it does work. They've used it in third world countries where they don't have any electricity or natural gas or anything like that or even propane for hundreds of miles. So this is all you can do. So we're going to give it a try. That's why we're simply gridless. The simple ways. Back at you. 